Welcome to Wisdom Soup. Um, for those of you who are familiar with Wisdom Soup, it's great to see you again. And for those of you who are new to Wisdom Soup, if this is your first time, uh, welcome. I'm Ann Tucker, and I started Wisdom Soup about, uh, gosh, like literally more than four years ago now. And we've been meeting every single month. And each time we have uh, we have different topics, different speakers, different things happen. We're always interested in pretty much all things woo. So there's nothing off limits. And it's really whatever sounds fun, whatever sounds interesting, whatever's going to help us to grow. I feel good if I come away having learned something at every one of our sessions. So that's kind of my barometer. If I'm having fun, I'm guessing that you guys are going to have fun too. Um, so we do cover the whole gamut. We go everything from, you know, dream interpretation to dragons to, uh, you know, entities. <laughs> we cover it all, whatever sounds interesting and whatever is of service, which is really more what tonight is really about. I feel like this topic is one that doesn't get talked about because it's um, there's no dictionary on this stuff that I'm aware of, no authoritative dictionary anyways. Um, and, uh, and it's something that I think there's a bit of a stigma around the idea of entities and implants and attachments and stuff like that. And there's fear, a lot of fear around it as well. So I think the best way is we're all trying to release fear from the world. One of the best ways is to add information, right? To help, to help everybody who's, who that I, people that I know that have had specific, you know, a lot of experience with this kind of issue to be able to share that experience. And, uh, and then we can all walk away knowing that we are clear and sparkly in our own energy and knowing that there's nothing to be afraid of, that there is nothing out there that's more powerful than what you are. So, um, so that is the moral of the story today. If you want to go right to the punchline, that's it. <laughs> so, um, but, but as we get started, I'm just making sure that everybody is in here. looks like we are a few more coming in. So I'll keep an eye on it, make sure nobody gets left out. But, uh, but we have a great panel for tonight. And the people that I chose uh, to be on the panel are people that I knew had different, very specific perspectives on this topic. So we've got uh, one person who is more shamanic, who focuses more on, um, and she's going to be focusing more on, on entities and implants. We have another person who is more angelic, and she's going to be talking about more uh, demonic influences and maybe some black magic. We've got somebody who does a lot of uh, property clearing is very familiar with portals and things of that nature. So entities that are outside the self, but might be still in your, in your world and in your life. And then we also have some people here from the Aisling school of dream interpretation to help us understand how, uh, you might actually be able to see these and use your dreams to understand whether or not you have, uh, anything like this going on in your world. So, um, so to get started and, uh, we're going to go through and I'll, I'll kick us off and tell us a little bit about my experience with entities and attachments, uh, and all the whole gamut of beings that are out there. And then we're going to go through and each panelist is going to add some of their knowledge. Um, and if you have questions along the way, please do use the chat. Um, I'll be keeping an eye on it. And then at the end, we'll come back and we'll answer questions for everybody. So feel free if you have questions for any of the panelists. Um, I, I can keep an eye on it as we go. I'm just not sure if I'm going to be able to catch everything. So if I miss something, I will get it at the end. All right. All right. So, um, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm going to try to do this as gracefully as I can. I made slides to introduce all of our speakers. So I'm just going to do a share screen to show you what that looks like. Um, if I did that accurately. There we go. So now you can see. All right. So I have one of these for each of the speakers. So I am Ann Tucker. Um, and for those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm a, an author, a business coach, a healer, and a deep trance channel. So I channel from the angelic realm. And uh, I'm a creator of business energetics, the soul type test, the transmitter of the nine angelic frequencies. So I'm a, specifically a frequency channel is what I do and a channel for angelic wisdom. So, and I'm the founder of Wisdom Soup. I started Wisdom Soup several years ago and, um, and that would be a great claim to fame except for the fact that what really matters is those people who show up every single month and make this a community. So <laughs> it's really about the community. And, uh, and I am always amazed and I'm thrilled by the caliber of people who show up for this group for how incredibly high vibration um, this group is. So, um, so, okay, so getting into the topic of uh, entities. So I would not have believed that entities were real. I would have, it just didn't fit within my worldview. As a matter of fact, I think my worldview was that, uh, that if you just 
don't allow those things into your world, they're not going to appear in your world, right? It was sort of like, if I'm just that positive, if I'm in that much light, then they're not going to bother me. And that was sort of my attitude. And, um, and uh, there was several, it was, gosh, at this point, it was many years ago. Um, oh, I was married at the time and my husband was out of town and I, uh, I woke up in the middle of the night. So I was alone, woke up in the middle of the night and I got the um, uh, a visual, it was like four in the morning. And I had a visual of someone that I knew all of a sudden I could see their energy in my mind's eye. And it was just an odd thing. Like all of a sudden this person popped into my head and I could see their energy. And this was before I really knew much about healing. It was early in my own journey. And, um, uh, and as I was looking at them, I noticed that there was something weird on them. On the left side, there was this thing that looked like a starfish on them. And I thought, well, that shouldn't be there. And I'm half asleep. I'm groggy. And I'm, oh, that shouldn't be there. So in my dream, I sort of wander over and I take the thing off. And guess what? It floored me when this thing literally turned around and came at me. And I physically felt it as much as you can feel things in a dream that it was coming at me and I was kind of pushed backwards. And luckily, I had very recently learned the tool of the purple flame. So I just almost like an instinct created the purple flame and just conjured up the purple flame and the thing just kind of skittered away. And at the time I thought this is just my you know weird dream, but it seemed so like I was awake, but it seemed like a strange dream. So I kind of discounted it until the next day when I talked to the person that this happened to and they said, oh my gosh, I feel like I was hit by a truck. <laughs> and I was like, really? And it re I realized, yeah, that sure enough, I that had been a real thing. Like the removal of this entity had done enough in terms of messing with their energy that they physically felt it in a real and palpable way the next day. So that was my introduction to the, the fact that these things are real. And then to confirm that, I then sort of looked it up and did some research and found many other people referring to entities in the exact same shape. That starfish shape is a common type of entity. And that really blew my mind. So just having that confirmation of having no idea what it was, having seen it, and then having seen many other people describe it in the exact same way that I saw it. So this is a specific kind of entity. And tonight we're going to talk about the different types. There are many different types of entities. People kind of lump all of these type of creatures into the same bucket. Like it's like all entities are entities. But in fact, there are lots of different types of things that are going on that can mess with your energy. <laughs> so we will talk about all the different things. Um, uh, and, um, and so I wanted to share as we get started and, and, uh, about a little bit about my understanding of the kind of entity that I saw. Um, and this is these ideas that they're, they are, um, uh, these creatures, I'll call them a creature because they really are a type of creature. And, uh, and I channeled this message. I have this actually, I, I share channel messages on, on a different YouTube channel, on my own YouTube channel, which is Ann Tucker the Ann Tucker YouTube channel, I share uh, messages every Friday that I channel from the angels. And this specific one is all about entities. So I have an excerpt from that, which I'm going to share with you guys tonight. So here is what they say about that type of en entity, about what it is. So they say, okay, they, these types of entities, they are those beings who would delve internal and become like mind. So they are working within. So when you have one of these entities on board, it sounds like your own thoughts is what they're saying. And they go on to say, excuse their patterning because they are consumed with their dearth of freedom to become more. They have not the access that you encounter on their journey. They have only freedom to reveal themselves as they are, a glimpse seldom seen, but often felt. So what they're saying here is that, is that entities don't have a pathway to evolution like we do that we have the ability to continue to grow and evolve, but they don't. So that's what they're saying is they're consumed with their dearth of freedom to become more. They don't have that ability to become more. Um, and so, which is something that we do. So they have only the freedom to reveal themselves exactly as they are, a glimpse seldom seen, but often felt. So you often feel an entity, even if you don't see it. They go on to say the trauma of feeling less than, the struggle of hearing deafening sounds of your own self-doubt, these echo chambers within cause them to reveal their most purposeful being. So it's when you have internal uh, feelings of doubt, um, uh, feelings of feeling less than these sort of negative emotions is what they're getting at. Negative emotions is what can draw these sorts of creatures towards you. So that's what they're describing here, what the angels are describing. They go on to say, um, 
to envelop and accuse yourself of being less than you are, this envelopment total obscures your relationship to your own self and limits your capacity for joy. So this is what you get when you have an entity of this type is they obscure your capacity for joy. They separate yourself from you, you separate you from your true self. So you end up having these feelings of pervasive self-doubt. Um, and this is, like I said, one type of entity that I'm talking about. You feel less occupied in your life, prevalent sensing, dismal sadness, hoping none will come about that will terminate your obsession with self-removal. So we can get really dark if you have one of these on board. Like you can literally be in a, a downward spiral of even to the point of wishing yourself not to be here anymore. So it can be a, a heavy, heavy burden to have something like this on board. Um, they go on to say, it becomes a pattern through which they benefit. They seek to absorb your caution, your fear, and absorb it they do. They have uh, tried many times to access you all, but have only success upon the instance of your accounting. When you are delving down into your internal heart, uh, and when you are delving down internal to your heart and feel like pulse after pulse is not but beating near to your own demise. Um, so, so in other words, they try to get in, but they can't um, unless you have these negative feelings, unless you're really in the dumps, then they have an opportunity. And there's other circumstances, and we'll talk about that, and some of our other panelists will add some color to that. But here they're specifically talking about one way that they can get in is when you have these, when you're in a depressed state or you have negative emotions. Um, that could be anger, that could be all kinds of emotions. Um, when you hear your voice rankle your expression, doubt fills your mind and distract you from your purpose, you are then emitting the frequency, they delve down and become one within your orbit. So that's just literally like they're out there, they smell it sort of like a shark smells blood, except I kind of don't want to use that because I don't want this to seem like these creatures are not as violent as a shark. I think in the same way that sharks are misunderstood and seen as being actually, you know, very violent and scary creatures. Um, not all sharks are scary and not all sharks actually want to eat people. It's not like that. And these are the same way is that they're not, they're not a real threat to you. If you know what they are, they're not that hard to get rid of and they they can't do any lasting damage to you of any kind. So they go on to say, um, they come from uh, many fears. They live their purpose, which is to bring forward those causalities that emit your sadness. They call into your awareness those happenings of duration most extreme, depression and sadness, inner turmoil of self-reflection and doubt. These circumstances must bring yourself the deity of darkness calling out your own heart. So they are really trying to bring these, once an entity is in your field, they're trying to bring up these emotions for you, trying to bring them up and out. Um, and they show you that your heart betrays your trust in self. They seek to absolve your feelings of degradation, to absorb these within themselves. So they're feeding off of those energies. So this is their motivation, is they're drawn in by the, 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 by the fear, by the, you know, by the, not the fear, but the, the negative emotions. And then they want to absorb them into their own, in their own selves. Um, uh, they are now serving to do this performance, to help, or they complete their own journey through this expression. So this is how they complete their journey on the earth. This is how they complete sort of their reason for being. Um, and they're doing this as a service, in a sense, they're offering a service to do this performance to help you see that which you are not, that which forms your self-judgment and causes blackness to enter your heart. So really one way of per perceiving entities is that they are identifying when you have these negative thoughts, bringing them to the forefront and making you become aware of them because those feelings are inside you. So they're calling them up, bringing them up. So they go on to say, um, darkness profound, it feeds their mind and calls them to you to absorb, to feel your sense of longing profound of weakness and hurt. They, these they feel and know you are ready to be relieved. They ask your assistance with their employee. They want to be heard, but they do not understand that they are forcing the continuation of the pattern you seek to absolve. Um, they know only that they play the role in the performance of eating that which you wish to discard. They feel their torturous role defined to be subsequently used for your benefit. So in other words, they don't understand that they're harming you in the same way that we don't really think about when we eat a plant or something. We don't think about I'm harming the plant. Um, not necessarily. Maybe you do, but most of us don't. <laughs> <laughs> but they uh, they are just doing what they do, right? They're coming in they're, they're It's just food for them. So if they're not malicious, they're not malevolent, they're just creatures. 
So they go on to say, uh, but we say often the removal of these entities is needed. They do not understand that their presence diverts you from being your true self. They only comprehend that their being of service in the stationing of themselves in relation to your grief, of seeing it purge into themselves. That darkness will prevail and they cannot perceive that they are causing your reflection to assume this negative stance longer than is needed for your highest benefit. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, there's one last paragraph here. They say, there are many who will say that these creatures are of alien origin or are not holy. We say they are creatures not of sound origin, but beings nonetheless. We say they are friendly to themselves and seek their own benefit. So they are not, like I said, they're not malicious. This particular type of entity is not malicious. Um, uh, we say they are uh, not, uh, not at the purchase of another's duress, but one only to have found that which they need to sustain themselves. They comprehend their own role as being of service and seeking their meal, not as evil. So that was the message I got specifically about the kind of entity that I saw in that one specific example I told you about. And since then, I've gone on to, to find lots of uh, um, not only entities, uh, you know, entities, attachments, implants, all the kind of stuff. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to kind of go around Red Robin and let everybody add their, their picture to this story. Um, but the one thing I want to add as we get rolling is to say that, that the people that I have worked with who have had these sorts of issues come up are every kind of person. They are people at every stage in their journey. There are people who are filled with light, who are well along old souls who've been on the planet for gazillions of time. And guess what? They have an implant. Um, they, have, they have an attachment, right? They have an entity. And it can happen. It happens easily. And, and, and it may be something that, that somebody has lived with their whole life and is not even aware of. So there is no stigma to this. There's no like you're going to get super, super amazing. And, and you know, just because somebody has an entity doesn't mean that they're not as spiritually advanced or that they're somehow not doing it right or whatever. No, it's just it's clearing entities is good hygiene. Let's just leave it at that. It's good hygiene. All right. So um, so with that in mind, I would love to introduce our uh, second panelist besides myself here, um, uh, which is, and let me bring her on board with my little, okay. So our next panelist is Karen Jackson, and she is a shamanic practitioner and a Reiki master teacher. She has been studying and participating in the energy healing arts for 30 years. She offers energy healing sessions and teachings to assist people on their spiritual path and to remember who they are. So, uh, and here's her contact information there, CelticSparrow11 at gmail.com. All right. Okay, thank you. And uh, Karen, so I would love for you to add a little color to this topic. So you've got, you're a shamanic practitioner. You have had a significant amount of experience with this sort of, these types of creatures. Can you tell us in your description, what is an entity? Um, well, uh, you, you coined it beautifully and described them beautifully. Um, my experience with them is that they are a negative energy form uh, a lower vibration form that is just attracted to and feeds off of our our lower energies. Um, rage is their favorite meal. Uh, anger, fear, despair, sadness, um, grief. And I find that, you know, the people that I work with that tend to have these entities have had these feelings for quite some time. And it's like they can't find their way out of it. And then, of course, having this entity attached to them because it was attracted to that very vibration makes it even harder. So it's like like a dog chasing its tail. Um, yeah, and, and they do. They just we can get them by feeling this way, because when we're when we're meshed in these emotions, it lowers our energy field and allows these things to come in. That's one of the reasons why I stopped hanging out in certain places because, um, you know, like bars, you know, don't get me wrong, I like a good bar, but you know, there's a lot of lower energies that tend to be there. And if I'm going in there or anyone's going in there feeling this way, there's an opportunity and that's, they're just opportunists. They're just yeah. opportunists. Yeah, absolutely. 
So what would you say are the different types of entities? If there's more than one kind, what are you familiar with in terms of entities? Um, you know, they, they look, it's, it's kind of interesting because they, my experience has been is that there's levels of them. Like there are some that uh, like to feed on just sadness. Mm. And then there are some that like to feed on grief. And then the ones that like to feed on rage and anger um, tend to be more aggressive and they tend to show themselves bigger. Um, I was working with a client one time and she had a lot of sadness. Her husband worked nights and um, her, all of her children were gone. She was an empty nester. And so at night she would lay in bed and she would be sad and she would, you know, cry out for help. And she had a sense of an energy that was like a cat. And she had just recently lost her cat. And so she allowed this entity to come on the bed with her and let it snuggle up. And it made her feel less lonely and less sad. But as time went on, this thing became more and more aggressive and wouldn't leave her alone. And she realized this is not a cat. <laughs> this is certainly not my cat. Right. Right. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's definitely a different kind of entity and a different experience for sure. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so in your experience, when you see that, you do you see them clairvoyantly when you're working with them? I do. I do. And I, I see them in a, a number of different ways. Um, Sometimes it can be uh, take on the appearance of slime. Yeah. yeah. Um, or <clears throat> more often, um, I will see them as a gray mist or smoke or a black mist or smoke. Um, sometimes they can take on a humanish form. Mm. Um, sometimes they do look galactic to me. So, uh, you know, it just it depends on what is going on with the person, um, where they got it, how they got it, what's going on with them. Uh, so they can take on a, a number of different forms, but they all have a same kind of vibration. And, and I don't know how to explain that to you, but in doing the work for as long as I have, it's like they've got a different vibration. It's like, oh, okay, you're an entity, got it. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Something definitely different from the human, right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. So, um, so now entities and implants, how would you describe an implant? Um, an implant tends to be a non-physical device, um, energetic device that actually gets planted. Uh, it can be planted in our auric field. It can be planted in or along our chakras or even in the physical body. And for me, my language with spirit when I'm doing healing work, spirit shows things to me in symbols. So an implant to me looks like a SIM card like we have in our, uh, in our phones. Yeah. So I see it looking like a SIM card and that's how I know that it's an implant. Um, they're basically an energetic parasite yeah. is what they are. Um, I think that's such a good point you bring up about the fact that it shows up for you as a SIM card. And I think that, that for those of you who are healers, who are working in this way, if you are clairvoyant uh, or, or, you know, or even if you're not normally clairvoyant, that you can create your own dialogue, right? You can create your own language and say, okay, when this is the issue, this is how I'm going to, you can choose, I'm going to visualize it as a SIM card. So then whenever that shows up, you're like, oh, I know what that is. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. That's been very helpful for me. Um, and I remember the first time I saw one, I'm like, what is this? <laughs> what, what is this? And what do I do with it? And what is it doing in this person? Yeah. 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 That's, I think, why it's so helpful to talk about this stuff, because that is, if you've never, if nobody's ever told you and you run into it and you know, like, you know, instinctively that there's something not right about this, right? Correct. But, um, but yeah, so I think it's trying to get it out there that, yeah, this is, it happens. These are out there and it's, it's not that big a deal, but it needs to be dealt with. It needs to be, it, you don't, you know, it needs to be not there. <laughs> Correct. You know, and, and the one thing that I try and remind my clients, you know, when they say, so, you know, what'd you see, what happened? I'm like, well, you had a couple of implants, you had some things and they're like, what? <laughs> what is that? Yeah. It's like, no, 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 no. We have dominion here. Yes. We have the power here. And, and like you said in the, in the beginning, which was so beautiful, 
is that um, they are feeding off of us. Yeah. They need us. We don't need them. Truly, we don't need them. But we have the the dominion here. We have the power here. And that's why I love the group that you do and having these topics like this so that we can get educated and empower ourselves to say, no, no, mm -mm. this this is not okay. This yeah. is not happening. I reject this. And what do you think for implants? What? Why would someone have an implant who puts it there? And what is the motive behind that, do you think? Well, uh, I'm glad that this is, you're, we're able to be woo-woo here. There oh, yeah, are- Go full woo. We're ready for you. Lay it Excellent. Out. Excellent. How refreshing. Um, there are, there are uh, other beings, other energetic beings that share this space with us. Mm -hmm. And many times we don't see them. Mm -hmm. And what my understanding is not for all of them, but for some of them that we are uh, a source of energy for them. And um, so they utilize these um, implants. Uh, they're designed to keep us asleep energetically and spiritually, because if we begin to evolve and become more sovereign, and get hip to what is going on, then we can put a stop to it. And for many of them, their source of energy or their source of fun or whatever you want to call it is uh, our food is then depleted. So they, they inter inject these in many of us um, to block our energy flow, to block the energy of our chakras, uh, to siphon off our life force. Um, to keep negative programming going, to keep us locked in that place of negativity, um, to switch off our gifts, um, or to keep us from discovering the gifts that we have, yeah. um, and to lower our vibration and to generate a lack of peace. Because if you can get a whole, all of humanity uh, fighting amongst themselves and not searching for peace or for enlightenment or for growing, um, then that can keep us down and keep us controlled. Yes. Yeah. That's just, that's just not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. That's so helpful to understand kind of what's going on. And again, like the moral of the story there is that we have, we have, like you said, this is our domain. We have control. There's nothing to fear, but we need to be aware that this is out there. Right. Yeah. Fantastic. Sure. Thank you so much, Karen. We'll come back to you at the end uh, with our final questions. And awesome. Thank you. Thank you very questions. much. Thank you. All right. So uh, just a moment here. Okay. So, um, so our next panelist I'd love to introduce is um, uh, the lovely Elizabeth Rose. So here she, just a moment, let me go ahead and tell you about Elizabeth. Um, so Elizabeth, is um, uh, Elizabeth, if, there you go, now you can see her. Um, she is an author, uh, international speaker, artist, hypnotist, and hypnotist, uh, hypnosis instructor. But she spends 90% of her time working with, uh, working with clients as a deep trance channel. She's an amazing channel, um, helping her clients to unblock, inspire, heal, and enable clients to, uh, to succeed, move forward, and change their lives for the better. So um, her website, you can find her at therosecottage.ca. She's in Canada. And uh, here we are. I would love to introduce you to Elizabeth. Just a moment here. Let me, there she is. Here she is from Canada. You can tell because it is dark at her house. It's actually- It is dark. dark. <laughs> How appropriate. <laughs> but thank you so much for staying up to join us tonight. I really appreciate it. <laughs> well, the, the darkness is perfect for the topic. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. So true. Well, I really wanted to have you join us, Elizabeth, because you has ha have had some really um, uh, uh, profound experiences and a lot of experience with uh, things such as demons. And yes, demons are a real thing. And I'd love you to tell us exactly what a demon is, if you could. Okay. Thank you, Anne. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. So, uh, yeah, demons are real and they are evil spirits and they reside in 
uh, I guess what you'd call hell or what the angels call the abyss. And they are, in my experience, uh, I was shown actually, uh, everything that I know is something that I've experienced for the most part. And so the angels uh, to show me that this stuff was real took me into the abyss. So demons are uh, fallen angels in many cases, led by one in particular, Lucifer. That was the name that God gave him. Uh, he was a very powerful angel and he rose up against God and he had choirs of angels rising up against God and was cast out of heaven and wound up in the abyss or what you'd call hell. And many of those angels followed him. Angels know everything. They know all that is. And so when they made their decision to rise up against God and they were cast out, then there was no redeeming them. There's no redemption. And think of them as enraged. Uh, when I was taken into that experience, um, there was a real craving, like two days later, I was still craving, uh, going back and just, just exploring that again. And I thought it was, it was like tasting chocolate. I just wanted to go back. And I finally went up to the angels and said, what is this? And they said, now you understand addiction. It yeah. all comes from the dark forest, but that's a demon. There are uh, beings who have de-evolved you've heard a lot of really interesting stuff about evolution of consciousness while there are beings that are either evolving we are hopefully evolving in consciousness or we are de-evolving and those beings that are de-evolving are also demonic because they've been possessed by uh, evil spirits uh, but it's um, something to be aware of and it's certainly not something to be afraid of and and so just know that um, there is this pull, they're always enticing you, and there's this pull from the angelic realm enticing you to go up to a higher vibration, and yeah, so you have a choice, it's the realm of free will. Does That's, that explain it? It does, it's awesome. So, so I'm wondering, so if uh, entities are, sort of you see them attach, attachments, what is the difference between having a demon and having an entity? And how can you tell the difference? <laughs> okay, well, luckily, I've only encountered uh, a handful of demonic cases. I get referrals from a lot of clients and uh, Reverend, <laughs> Reverend sends me the, the most... Um, <laughs> <laughs> the most interesting ones. Let's That's just right. So the, the church actually sends you demonic cases, don't they? Which I think is a great oh, yeah. testament to your skill. Yes. I should add Ghostbusters on there. Right. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, so an entity, that, like uh, Karen mentioned, like you've mentioned, there, there are entities all over the place. Uh, think of a social worker who's working with a lot of people that are troubled with a lot of negative emotions. Emotions are very heavy. And so they weigh you down. And so negative emotions are weighing you down and entities are negative. So you're vibrating at a lower frequency and it's like a signal like attracts like if you're vibrating at a lower energy, you're going to attract a lower energy or a lower energy experience. And so entities are always looking for an access point and they cannot mess with your energy unless they're given permission, but they're sneaky. <laughs> and so they come up with all kinds of ways that are uh, uh, put you into agreement with them. And so um, an entity could be just a detached emotion. It doesn't have to be a, a sort of a sentient being. Mm -hmm. It can just be an, a negative energy that kind of hangs on you. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a, uh, maybe it's a part of you. And uh, as a hypnotist, we, we do entity release. And so we're always uh, scanning for entities, <laughs> see if there's anything that doesn't belong. An entity is just something that doesn't belong. It could even be a little ghost who, um, I had <laughs> one client who had an attachment and it was a little boy from the hundred year war and he was stuck on her because she had, they had the same issues around money. Mm. And so he was just needed to be guided up to the light. Uh, I've seen all kinds of entities, but a demon is really not an issue unless 
you are influenced unless you are open, unless you become aware of the demon. And full on possession is very rare, like I said, but I, I've certainly had, uh, I've seen every a lot, seen way too much actually. And I've seen stuff that wasn't so threatening, wasn't so scary. It's all just very interesting, but at no point uh, is there any reason to be afraid. And that's what people don't understand. Television, movies are all wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think that's, and that's great to know. And I, I do know that it can be, uh, the idea of it, the idea of possession of not being in control of yourself is frightening, but what is addiction, right? Addiction is not feeling in control of yourself. So, and it is a demonic energy, but it's not something to be afraid of. It's something to be aware of. Um, so, so, so I've channeled, um, I work with the angels. I work with God. I work with Christ. And, uh, I was, I was, um, channeling uh regarding entities and and jesus said when people lose control they fly into rage and then they say later that they lost control but jesus said that what they don't understand is that the moment they lost control they were in control of another someone is always in control and so uh karen mentioned that entities and demons love rage yeah especially when you fly off the handle, because then it's an open door for them. They can just, they're like, uh, uh, we're like uh, puppets, ventriloquist puppets. They can just step in from behind us and just take over. And then they will step out. And you might not even know that you got impacted. You won't know that you're possessed. And for the most part, and people don't know they're possessed, generally speaking, uh, until they, until you're teaching a hypnosis class and everybody goes into trance and then that demon will surface or someone who's drunk, they are not in control, but something, if they're, I walked by uh, uh, the Eaton Center in Toronto one time and there was a gentleman who was uh, inebriated and he was shouting obscenities and I could, I, uh, I feel a cold chill. I actually, my left hand gets cold. And their voice, someone who's possessed, it's like a megaphone in my left ear. And I, I felt the sensation that something wasn't right with this gentleman who was screaming obscenities. His voice was so strange. And so I sat and I channeled remote healing. I didn't even think about it until uh, uh, I walked home. And about midnight, <laughs> I woke up and... I always had my computer by my bedside and the, that light that never turns off on a computer, it, it was flashing like this. And uh, I thought, what's that? And I, I focused and there was this, and, and Karen described it, this smoky, tendril, creepy looking thing. I've seen all kinds of entities and demons, but um, yeah, that was what was released from that gentleman. So you just never know if someone's possessed, but I would say maybe I've had worked with, cleared with angelic assistance, maybe only six true full uh, possessions where they were <laughs> spitting and, and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a real deal is that's, that's what full possession looks like is spitting and the strange heads coming forward and the whole, that's what demonic possession looks like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you won't, it won't happen usually unless someone's in trance. I've only seen it in someone who was conscious. I was referred a client and I just had someone walk in the front door to spend time with like seven days with me. And someone called me on Skype and uh, it was a client and they were with a client. And this person was totally in the grips of a, of an entity well, a demon actually. And the angels helped assist that person but it's really uncommon uh in fact even exorcists in the catholic church they don't encounter a demonic presence very often yeah. and when they do they go through they'll conduct all kinds of tests to try and eliminate 
uh, psychosis or some other problem. Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty rare. So it's not something you need to be too afraid of. I think that's important to know. Yeah. That it is it's, and I, I, uh, I actually saw a program on that, that was talking, it was following a Catholic priest who was, cause there are certain, like a handful of priests in the Catholic church who are basically tasked with being exorcists and they get, they get very little work. <laughs> well, I was found, uh, as I was listening to some of these, yes, these priests, um, one of them mentioned that they'd been attacked. A, a, a journalist asked, have you ever been attacked by a demonic entity? And they said, oh yeah, we get attacked quite a bit. Well, that's an issue. What the angels do uh, and what these healers are doing is we're, we're clearing you of negative emotions, negative entities, so that there will be no attack, so that you're rising up to a higher and higher frequency and a higher vibration. So you're not even on the radar screen of those entities. They're at a low vibration. You're working to get, to get up to a higher vibration and you're working to eat light, to be light, to think light, to feel light, 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 light. Just be in the light, be of the light and you'll never have a problem. Yeah. And laughter is the best medicine when it comes to anything dark, scary, evil. Yeah, yeah. And love. Excellent, and love is the big one. That's the big one. All right, thank you so much, Elizabeth. We'll be coming back to you as we uh, get to the uh, to the end for a few more questions. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> and like you said, if you guys have more questions for Elizabeth, just add them into the chat and then we'll, we'll come back to that at the end. Um, all right. And I would love to introduce you to our next panelist, who is Susan Sinclair. And let me go ahead and tell you about Susan. So Susan is a modern mystic, a spiritual advisor, soul reader, sound healer, and Akashic adventurer. She's devoted to helping people remain, uh, uh, people reclaim their spiritual wisdom and autonomy as sovereign souls. And I will add her contact info into the chat box for everyone. And let's go ahead and bring her. Uh, 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 to connect with us. All right, welcome, Susan. Oh, you're muted. There we go. Perfect. Thank yes, you. It happens all the time in my sessions, and I forget <laughs> it works both ways. You have to, you have to press the little button. So. <laughs> Thank you, no. Anne, and thanks to all of you, wonderful, wondrous, and wonderful souls gathering today. Because this is, you know, really important stuff right now. And one of the reasons that we are, I think, more aware of it is the pot's gotten stirred up. Yeah. Yes. So there are so many strong, divisive, intense emotions, and most humans have no experience in taking charge of their emotions and recognizing that there's these other beings, non-physical beings who feed on our energy. And who are we choosing to feed? Well, they're making unconscious choices and being vulnerable. And it's up to us to reclaim this, what I would call wise autonomy, our sovereignty and our certainty of our sovereignty. Because then, as, as people are saying, we're not vulnerable anymore. We're off their bandwidth. We're out of their perception. We are in a different state. And I like to, to think of this as a state of grace. Yes. So the state of grace for me, just a quick definition, because I've worked with the energies of grace in the full 10 years that I've been clearing people and places. And what I've come to understand is this very broad spectrum. These are divine energies of love and power and wisdom and joy. And all together, self-adjusting to the situation, they're the antidote to anything that would be harmful. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Learning to deploy that. Yes. Yeah. So I would love to ask you about um, specifically, because I know you have done quite a bit of work around property and around things such as uh, portals that end up on property. And I would love to get some information about that because we can, we can have an entity, your home can have an entity, <laughs> your property can have an entity. So, um, so Susan, can you tell us how would you know if your home or your property actually has one? or has some sort of an issue? That's a great question because 
it can be difficult to distinguish if the entity is attached to you or to your home. So if it's attached to you, you'll feel symptoms wherever you go because it's about you, it's connected to your fields. The general symptoms of sometimes unexplained fatigue, dizziness, um, upsurges of fear, sleep disturbances, itching and unexplained pains and mental fog or confusion. For some people, the first thing on their radar is spiritual disconnect. They suddenly can't contact their guides or their angels. And all of those are indications that an entity is in your fields. But is it with you or is it in the house? So when you feel better away from your house and worse when you come home, or if people keep telling you the same things about your home, the first home I lived in after I was awakened was haunted. And many visitors would come and say, your basement's so creepy. I don't want to go down there. When you get reports like that, then it's something about your space. There's something with the property. It's not about you. So those are some really good clues to say, oh, um, this is where the attachment lies. It's either in the space or connected into my own fields or the fields of someone else in the family. So our pets can end up with attachments. They do so much healing work for us that sometimes they end up getting tangled up in things too. So you just, the, what I found the most helpful is if you can go into a quiet space, like in the center of your head and get very neutral mm -hmm. and admit with a little amusement, you might have a bias about what the answer would be here, but if you can just quietly set the bias aside and say, what is really going on here? Where is this coming from? You'll get clear answers. So if you're not sure, get quiet, tune in, center, and then ask. Ask your trusted guides. They will help you understand if it's not clear. So if it's in the property, the other thing that can happen is you get bad luck or weird events in the home, on the land that's connected with the land. Doesn't happen anywhere else. Certain places in your home, you may be nervous or cold or uncomfortable for some reason. And remembering that all this stuff is something you can't explain from natural or physical reasons. It's, it's something inexplicable. That's the clue, this is subtle energy. It's not physical. So those are the main reasons that can, that can, and sometimes people can end up with personality disturbances or a sense of being violated in some way. All of those, those are pretty um, extreme example. Yes. When things get that extreme, you need to take extreme action. Usually that's the time to call in someone skilled. Mm -hmm. less extreme you often can deal yourself with the proper awareness and support excellent. So excellent that's that's the idea the other thing is to remember that um when you're working with these kinds of entities or infestations or beings such as demons and some there are many entities i think of it as the spiritual ecosystem it's like a parallel to our physical ecosystem. So your home and your property are not home only to you and physical beings. They're home to a lot of non-physical beings as well. Mm -hmm. And that can explain why you would have entities in your home when you move in. Even if you've cleared the space before you move in, if the entity is native to the land or connected to trauma in or on the land, you will need to address that more specifically if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So are, are, in terms of having entities in your home, are there, is there such a thing as, uh, you know, are spirits in your home or, so, for example, somebody is asking in the chat, if, if what if you have a, if there's somebody, if your house is haunted, is it always a bad thing? Or is it like she says she doesn't, it's not necessarily, she doesn't mind it. Is it something that she should worry about? That's a great question. That's a great question. So the, the thing to notice when there are other spirits, non-physical beings around, is what do you sense is their intention? And what do you sense is the effects on you? If there are no harmful effects to you and no um, intent to harm you, you can kind of live and let live. If these spirits, these non-physical beings don't want to go to the realms beyond the physical for some reason, they may be hanging out with you to just soak up some good vibes from you they may actually have some good intentions and want to share something with you. I contacted a lot of 
deceased humans who were still on the earth plane and they actually just wanted to say hi or offer me you know some advice or some insights about the life beyond physical life and that's all fine and well if they're choosing to move on they'll let you know and if they want your help you can help them or direct them to someone who can so there's a home, home in Illinois, Haunted Willow Creek Farm, the most haunted residence in the state of Illinois. And this is that man's premise is it's a refuge and a sanctuary for, for spirit beings. Oh, wow. He has a spirit family. Wow. And when you go visit the place, you can sense them. They talk to you. They interact with you. They can have some physical, you can have some physical awareness of them as well as a lot of psychic awareness but his home was also infested with unpleasant, harmful entities because he had portals, which is a nice segue into And that's my next question for you, exactly. So can you tell us uh, what is a portal? So briefly put, a portal is simply a passageway between different realms or dimensions. That's all it is, it's just a passageway. They can be created or they can be naturally occurring. Some are more stable than others. There's, there's many ways to perceive them and understand them. And they often have useful functions. It's like a shortcut between dimensions and they take spirit traffic. So there's spirit traffic that can be either forces, non-personal forces can get through these gateways or sentient beings can travel the gateways. The time when they become a concern is when they, you know, humans have kind of not paid attention and not fulfilled our spiritual stewardship role on the planet for quite a while. Our attention, we got kind of blinkered into certain ways of perceiving reality that didn't allow for these things to happen. We lost our shamanic and indigenous connections, but our role has always been to interface between the physical and non-physical realms to create harmony to help things work better. And when portals are already functioning that way, you don't need to do anything with them. There are portals that conduct angels and healers and benevolent ETs and travelers, just plain travelers from all kinds of dimensions, just kind of peeking in on the earth and saying, well, isn't this an interesting place? <laughs> Wonder if I, you know, can we have a souvenir or can we leave something useful for you? So there's all kinds of intentions again, and all kinds of effects. So if the effects are harmful and the intention is unfriendly, that's when you start taking action. And that's what Al was experiencing at Willow Creek Farm was he had a number of portals on the property. He had an entire tribe of Native American spirit family and they would just go you know, in and out and around, no harm done until some aggressive, invasive and hostile beings hijacked the portals and bullied his spirit family. So that's when he asked for help and they tried to push him down his own stairs. So when it got physical, he knew it was really time for help. Okay. But that's what we needed to realize that if the clue that you have a portal, mm -hmm. if you're not a sensitive and this just isn't registering on you and that's okay, we're all in different bandwidths. If you clear the home and the same stuff shows up again, right. And you do it again and it happens again and again and again. And the same basic stuff, you have a portal because you haven't dealt with the source of these incoming unwanted presences. That's a great way to know. Yeah, that's super. So now if you, if, if uh, is there a way to sort of filter a portal so that if it's, if it's a, if it's in a place where it's not doing anybody harm, but you don't want bad stuff to come through, is there a way to filter it so that only, that you, you kind of filter out the bad guys? Exactly, and that's, that's a great position to have is some portals are naturally occurring and they're neutral and we can just leave them alone. If they're not affecting you in any way, some effects of a portal, if it's trans-dimensional, you can get kind of locked in a dimensional loop. Sometimes people go into a fugue state here and there and they lose time. Um, those are indications that that's not useful for you. So the three main things I do with the portal that needs attention is if it's sort of neutral, but kind of in the way somehow, mm -hmm. I reroute it. I just relocate it. Mm -hmm. It's That is not a difficult thing to do. It's subtle energy. And you usually get some help because our perceptions are limited. We don't know how this is affecting all of the travelers. We want this to be a, a step up, you know, a help. 
Yeah. So you get some help and you figure out where should that go? And then it can go there. I've had to reposition portals above homes so that, but below airplanes. So <laughs> it um, was having no impact. Yeah. On the physical beings. Uh, the next thing you can do is reset it. If it's supposed to be there, and that's always the question to ask first, is this supposed to be here? Yeah. And if it is, but it's not harmonizing with you or others, then you can reset it or recalibrate it. Often a crystal grid is useful. And I have a set of three types of crystals that I use to grid portals where I want to reset and regulate it. Okay. You can also use prayers, invocations, anything that you use to clear a space. You can use sacred sound. You can use sigils. You can kind of tune in and say, what's going to help reset this portal to benevolent traffic? Perfect. That's awesome. And then you just take those measures and you will find that you have to repeat it frequently at first to hold, hold the reset, then less and less frequently. And finally, especially with crystals, the reset's permanent. The final thing that you would need to do is if you get this isn't supposed to be here, then you remove it or seal it shut. Okay. Okay. Great, thank you. And uh, by the way, uh, Elizabeth added an important point about spirits that there are uh, some ghosts that don't actually realize that she's saying some often ghosts don't realize they're dead. It's beneficial to tell them they're no longer physical and to go up to the light. It will help them to continue their journey of consciousness. So this is that is a true fact. And I think uh, many of you may, but it's an important point to make. So thank you for adding that. Yes, and you know, it, it also is important to realize that some spirits aren't ready. Some souls, right. they need some help, they need some time. You may need to not tell them to go up to the light just yet because there's something that's scaring them and, and they need to understand something else first. So you can call in a counselor, an angelic counselor to help them understand. Now you're ready to cross mm -hmm. to where whatever your next level is. Yeah. The other thing I'd just like to add, and this may sound, okay, you ready for some controversial statement? <laughs> there are beings who are dark and benevolent. There are beings who are light and malevolent. So I always ask, what is the intention hmm. before I decide where what's meant to happen with these beings? If they don't belong here. Where are they meant to go? Hmm. And I would ask everyone to, instead of this default, send them to the light, send them to the light, ask first, where do they truly belong hmm. Hmm. for their greatest good? And then say, let them go there. Let them be taken there. And it won't always be the light. There are beautiful things that are made of darkness. That is true. That is true. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, and I had uh, another question for you, but it slipped my mind. But if I come back, I'll, I'll come back to you if I remember it again. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Susan. I really appreciate it. And we will come back to you again, like I said, at the end for our uh, final final round, the bonus round at the end. All right. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Um, all right. So now I would love to introduce you guys to two um, people I adore. Um, let me bring them on here. They are um, April Angel and Holly Betros. And uh, they are here representing the Ashling School of Dream Interpretation, which is uh, run by Michael Sheridan, who maybe many of you may already know. Michael's an amazing dream analyst and teaches others to use that skill uh, to help them. So the Ashling, Ashling School teaches a unique method of dream interpretation combined with channeling, which gives you a powerful insight into your client's dreams so that dreams become a, uh, a powerful tool for healing and a reliable way for your clients to benchmark their progress. In other words, people can track how they're moving forward in their spiritual journey through their dreams, which is pretty cool. So, um, so all right. So I would love to introduce you guys to April and Holly. Just a moment here. Here is Holly, uh, and let me bring in April. All right, welcome you guys. Great to see you both. Hey, you too. Welcome, Great welcome. To see you too. <laughs> so, um, uh, all right. So, I would love to get your guys' perspective on uh, on exactly. So, we've been talking about what entity are, entities are and demons are and all these different things, getting all these different insights into what what we're dealing with. 
how does someone know if they have one? How might it show up in their dreams? So what can they look for in their dreams to know if they've got something on board they don't want? Okay, I'll field that question. Um, it can show up in a lot of ways, actually. Um, one way is to see an unevolved being in your dream. Like rats and bugs don't always represent entities but sometimes they can because they're not evolved. They're a lower level life form. Um, an example of this was a dream that I saw where a woman was walking through the woods and in the dream, she said she was feeling anxious and she was walking with somebody else and a bat flew at her face and attached to her face and the word attachment stuck out to me. Oh. So she had pulled the bat off, but there was still a small piece left. So when I saw the dream, I asked her about it and she had, you know, tried to clear herself for channeling because that's what we teach, but there was still a small piece left on her and she got it cleared after that. But that was one way it showed up as a, an unevolved being with that bat being there. Sometimes they'll just show up um, as someone, not just, but they'll show up as someone like breaking into your house um, and making themselves or just coming into your house and making themselves at home. Like one person dreamt that their landlord walked into their house and just started cooking food in the kitchen. And it was kind of strange. They were just making themselves at home there. And that goes back to what everyone else was explaining about them using your energy. Food represents energy and dreams. So they were just like cooking their own food and like helping themselves to food in, the, in this dreamer's house, which represents the body. So that was suggestive of the fact that that dreamer had uh, an attachment that needed to be removed. And, um, I love that April. I, I, uh, I actually had a dream, uh, once that, uh, that Michael helped me with, um, that was, uh, and the dream, my, my gifts were shifting and I had been using one way to clear myself, but as, as you develop on your path, sometimes the techniques you've used for a while aren't effective. They aren't effective anymore, right? You've, you've increased your, whatever it is, maybe increased your channel, your bandwidth or whatever. And then all of a sudden you need new tools, new techniques. Well, that happened to me. And I had a dream as in the dream, I was uh, asleep in my bed and somebody um, uh, came in and into my bedroom, like in the dream, they come in, they like said, oh, thank you for the session or whatever. And then they leave and they left the door open. So I get up in the dream and I go out in the hallway and I go downstairs and I see my downstairs and the dream is an airport baggage claim with all these people and their baggage <laughs> telling me that I was leaving the door open for people to come in. So it was, it was just to, just to confirm and illustrate another example of exactly what you're saying. So I just needed to increase and have a new technique for shutting down. Um, and, and it was taken care of, but it's yeah, for sure. Anyways, please continue. You had another example, I think. That's a perfect example. Sometimes people will dream like people that are working in the spiritual field will dream of something much more specific. Like um, I can share a story that I had a dream that a spirit was following someone that I know and it was trying to infiltrate them. And I knew it in the dream and I helped them step away from this, you know, area where they were and I just knew it. And so I reached out to um, that person the next day and they're like, yes, I'm aware of this. I've been working on this. And so like your dreams will tell you very specifically, like this person is there's an attempt at infiltration. One person who also does spiritual work dreamt that she was in her room and um, she was asked to help beings go into the light. And so she went and she, she went into her channel and she felt a spirit move close to her and try to get into her body. And so um, she knew that it, she knew to be careful to not allow herself to connect to anything that wasn't of the light. And, but it felt like this thing wasn't of the light. So when she woke up, she contacted someone who was able to clear her with a compassionate, this, this, this thing was trying to possess her. And um, because it was, it was uh, someone that hadn't moved on to the light. So that's one example. It was very specific and very clear to that person that it was an, an attempt to have happen. Um, is there another example that I have here? One woman uh, shared a dream with me that her child had had. Um, he's almost a teenager. And he told her that he dreamt that a woman had broken into his house and demanded that he have sex with her or she was going to kill his dog. And when she told me that, I was like, oh, my God. Um, and it turns out that that was and he did it. So that was a succubus. And that's what they do. They demand they sleep with you and they have sex with men in dreams. And 
she threatened to kill his dog, but what really happens is that the dog represents the animal body, her, the, the dreamer's body, and this person or the, the succubus is now going to deteriorate the body now that she has or it has access to it. So, so, uh, so could you say the succubus? What is that? Yeah. I haven't heard that term before. Could, could you, what is it? Could you spell it? S-U-C-C-U-B-U-S. In, there's an incubus and a succubus. There's a different, there's like a male version and a female version and a succubus. Oh. They, they, they sleep with dreamers in the dream state and that's how they uh, operate, which was new to me. Yeah. <laughs> <I don't, laughs> um, but that's, but as soon as I heard the dream, I was like, that doesn't make sense. Like she's threatening to hurt him if he doesn't get intimately in touch with this woman. And usually having sex in a dream is good because it shows that you're getting intimately in touch with your energy, right. but this one was doing it in a threatening way. So I knew that she wasn't right. Um, Holly, do you have any examples uh, that you've seen in dreams or yes, or or yeah, not specifically a succubus, but other ways that sometimes entities show up in dreams or being at a lower like physical location because guides and higher vibration beings are usually either tall or they're placed above you to show that is an elevation. So if you have somebody instructing you to do something, but they're below you in the dream, that can be a clue too that they're um, not somebody you should listen to and there's an entity involved. And sometimes they also show up as imposters, like a phony cop or something like that are some of the ways that I've seen it too. Oh, interesting. Okay, fantastic. All right, thank you. That's really helpful. So, um, so what about implants? How would an implant show up in your dream? An implant usually shows up in the dream the same way an entity would, except they have a device with them. Like uh, Karen mentioned that she saw that SIM card, like they'll have a device, like, like maybe they'll just have a shovel with them, but they'll have something with them as they're breaking it. And they're trying to convince the dreamer to um, let them come in. Like at first the dreamer might be um, afraid of them as they should be. And they're like, oh no, we're here to protect you. See these, it's a, just a, it's just a, something to help protect you. Like uh, it, they'll change it to something that is a protective symbol for the dreamer. And the dream will be like, okay. It, Cause they're in a state of desperation at that time, a, you know, a trauma. So they're vulnerable to um, those things co coming to them and into them. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, um, so, all right. So could, uh, could you guys, and maybe Holly, you might have one of these, a, a personal experience of an entity yeah so it was actually through dreams that i discovered i could clear entities my husband has a rather unique ability to reveal other people's spiritual gifts in his dreams and had a dream in which spirits were attacking him and i was able to chase them away so that's how i learned i was able to clear entities which kind of started me getting more interested in this and since then i've been clearing entities from people as well as myself and something i found noteworthy much like you mentioned earlier Anne, is how and like how much entities can interfere with somebody's energy and mental state. Mm -hmm. So just to give you one quick example, about a year or so ago, I found myself all of a sudden in this very unfamiliar, dark and depressed state with no apparent trigger. It was just like very uncharacteristic for me and life seemed empty and pointless. I couldn't figure out what was going on. It was really distressing. And thankfully, then I had a dream that explained everything. So in the dream, I was watching this borderline suicidal girl feeling very concerned for her. And then I watched as this invisible cloud-shaped spirit was shoving a noose into her pocket, like wanting her to hang herself. And so even in the dream, I realized the spirit was the reason that this girl felt suicidal. So the dream was ultimately telling me that the cause of my depressed emotional state was that I had an entity that was giving me these dark thoughts. And once I distinguished that, I was able to clear myself just using the clearing protocols that we trained in our channeling classes at Ashling. And as soon as I did that, it was like instantly I was back to myself. And I'm much better at protecting myself now, but if I ever feel uncharacteristically, like uncharacteristically dark and unlike me and like creepy inside of myself, I know to check, check myself for an entity. That's so, and thank you so much for sharing that. And you're absolutely right that that is, that is you know, one of a, a great sign if you're uncharacteristically feeling self-doubt. If like you were feeling great one week and the next week, you're just kind of tearing yourself down and you just can't quite get back on track, then watch your dreams, right? Watch your dreams. I should add too that, that, that certainly having negative emotions is one way to let entities in. Other other ways could be um, substance abuse. Having you know, like like I think I think it was uh, Elizabeth that mentioned going to bars. Like that might be, or maybe it was Karen mentioned that going to bars was 
that they, they might hang out there. You might find a lot of entities hanging out in those locations because they're looking for easy ways in. Um, but simple things like uh, like a physical trauma. So a lot of entities will come on board for small children when they have an accident. It could be a simple thing like a child falling and they fall and they get scared and boom, the entity comes in. So and, and somebody could literally go for their whole life having this entity and have no idea. And it could be that they entered when the child was little and it, it just comes in when they had an accident. They had something happen that scared them. So, um, so it's, it's, it, that's why I love, and that's why I really wanted you guys to meet uh, April and Holly from Ashley Dream Interpretation, because it's, it's a great way. If you have one, it'll show up in your dreams. <laughs> so, so what do you think you guys, why is it, I know that you guys teach in the school, I go, I know you guys teach about entities as you're teaching people to channel. Why is that so important? Yeah, learning about entities is really part of the like both ethical and responsible training for how to channel. Because when you're channeling, you really have to know if your um, connection is interfered with. And entities are just one form of interference, but they can block your connection to your higher self and give you false information. So you really need to be sure your connection is clear. And they, like we've talked about, I mean, they show up way more often than you would probably expect in this work, but it's really not problem not problematic as long as you can identify that your connection is compromised and you know how to clear it or somebody can clear it for you. So like when students enroll in our channeling programs at the Ashley School, one of the first things we teach is how to check your connection for interference and how to clear yourself. And there's a whole protocol that we follow to make sure everybody's protected. But um, you know, like we've seen, dreams will show you if you have an entity. But if you're following the proper clearing processes and channeling regularly and like following the protocols, you shouldn't see them because you should be clearing them out through that process. So I guess, I guess to like sum it up, being able to identify and clear interference from entities helps ensure your channeling connection is trustworthy and secure. Yeah, I love that. And I think it is another thing to add on to the list of ways people can get exposed to entities is if you're learning to channel, and because uh, the thing is, is, is like people think I think there's a common misconception that channeling anything you channel is good. Like, oh, my gosh, I'm connected. Look, I'm getting information. But you could be connected to your Uncle Morty on the other side, who was no more divine than he was when he was living. Right. So 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 channeling is is it just means that you're opening to, you know, to, to receive information. And so, um, you know, one way, you know, for me that means I go up as high as I can. I protect myself by raising my energy as high as I can before I connect. And that way I know I'm connected to the light. And that's what I use. Um, but I know you guys have a protocol that you use in Ashley School that you teach people because it, you know people channel different you know, people. Sometimes people channel animals. They channel the, you know, the people who've crossed over. There's all different types of gifts. So you want to make room for that. So, and uh, uh, Holly and April, you're asking for their, thank you for asking for their contact information. Here is the, the website for Ashling. And you guys, when do you start the next course? I know you guys have another course coming up. What is, what's the next course that's coming up for you guys? In October is the next mentorship course, yeah. Mentorship, okay, well you guys, and that's the one where you actually teach people to analyze their own dreams, isn't that right? Do you guys, yeah. do, do you do channeling in that dream, in that course? Are you teaching them to channel as well? Yeah, channeling is the first, rough i think six weeks of the class so people Very learn how to do that so they can use channeling for their yeah things. it's phenomenal like people really do come out of that channeling like you really it's just so cool so cool really yeah all right thank you guys very much um all right so i would love to um uh go ahead and i just added the the contact information there for uh for the ashling school which is dream analysis dream analysis.com is the link for the school so let me go ahead and bring in i'm going to bring in all of our panelists um, so let me add in uh, uh, Elizabeth, here you are, and let me bring in Karen and, uh, and Susan. And, um, and I would love to ask you guys to just chime in if you would. Um, the question is, um, okay, so, and this is, and I'm sure everybody's gonna have a different flavor on this. So I'd love to hear from you if you have something to add is what techniques can we use to get rid of them? <laughs> How do we get rid of them? What do we do? So share your knowledge. What would you recommend? I can start. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Okay. So um, as a hypnotist, there's a, a way to just go into a deep trance state and scan your energy from the outside and come all the way to the inside and you scan everything. You scan your, your uh, inner tissues, your organs, your vital organs, your skin above and below, beside 
behind, in front of, and eat, like I said, eat very light food. The angels trained me when they trained me to be a channel, a deep trans channel for six months. <laughs> it was no meat, no alcohol, no caffeine, no sugar. Hours and hours of yoga to raise yourself up to a very high frequency and heal at a deep soul level, get rid of those emotions and love, 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 love everybody without judgment, without conditions, unconditional love, love yourself. And, and it's really all about healing. When you're healed emotionally, you're not going to attract negative entities. So healing is really, really important. Yes. I totally go. I'm sorry. You were yeah. adding on. I was going to say when I, when I'm channeling for Ashling Institute, it is go up to the light up, 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 up. And then just, uh, the, the angels are clearing and releasing and healing. And, uh, what you said earlier, and is that's it. You go up to God and then uh, get the angels, get the archangels, the seraphim archangels and angels to clear you. And I would also suggest, although some are not religious, the Lord's prayer is right there thrice in the morning, thrice at night. And uh, yeah, lead us away from temptation, deliver us from evil. That's a really good prayer. It works to clear. You know, I love that you said that because I, I was not raised with religion of any kind. I have four parents and each one had a different religion. So I don't have any attachment to any religion, but the angels in my channeling specifically talked about the power of prayer because it is something that's been used. Like each time it's used, a prayer is used. It's like it grows in its power and significance. So these, these prayers the prayers, like the Lord's prayer, these prayers that have been used for so long, they have, it's like a symbolism that's embodied in the prayer that when you're bringing it in, you're bringing in all this energy with the prayer. That's just, it's not just a prayer. It's all the stuff attached to the prayer. That's super powerful. So even though I'm not like, I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I do know the Lord's prayer. I had to learn it when my, my parents got married, but <laughs> that's why I know it. But, but even for someone like me, where I, I wasn't raised with the symbolism, the, the prayer will still work for, you know, for you, even if it's not your prayer, not your religion still works for you. I wanted to add, um, uh, there was one final uh, caption I wanted to share, uh, and I'll, I will, I'd love to hear from the rest of you too. Um, uh, in my channeling that I had on the entities about uh, the answer I got about what do you do, they said, um, uh, this is the, the channeling, they said, there is lack, grief, sadness. These clues lead you there. A person may inquire, is there an entity there? Perhaps, but you may dispel their presence simply by believing your own true purpose by finding your own self-worth and feeling it strongly, loving yourself with intensity, feeling the purge of their energy as you fill yourself with your own being, your truth, your wonderful joy of sensing nearness to source. You are capable of filling your being with this fullness of heart, even in darkness, and this will dispel the creature. So I love that, had to share it. <laughs> um, Anne? Yes. Can I um, just mention a couple of things from my own perspective and experience yeah. is that this very important to recognize that there's such a wide array of assistance for clearing. And what I have learned is if it's tedious to you or does not resonate, you don't need to use it. Yes. So if you're not a praying kind of person, you can find symbols or sigils or sacred music or there will be something that resonates deeply yes. with you to restore your sense of sovereignty. The whole point is your sense of certainty and sovereignty and your worthiness. Yes, and yes. The worthiness of mm -hmm. your own personal power as a divine being in the human skin. Yeah. But that's always been the thing. I've, I've had such an opposite journey from some because when I was initiated into Reiki, they invited us to fast, to pray, to eat very lightly. And I contemplated that. I was a deeply religious person at the time, but moving beyond it in certain ways. And the message I got like a thunderbolt out of the blue is come as you are. Mm, I love that. I love and that. That was what I needed. That was the antidote to some of the, um, the, the legalism that can crop up. And the, mm -hmm. if it's not legalistic to you, it's powerful. But if it has, if it brings that up for you, remember there's a hundred other ways. There's sacred sound, there's crystals, there are essential oils, there's tangible and intangible 
assistance, but all of it is just to support you in reminding yourself of your sovereignty. You're so right. Thank you for adding that. Yeah, absolutely. And I yeah. think, I think Karen, you were going to say something before. Did you have something to add? Yes, yes. I, I just loved everything that everyone has said. This is my first time experiencing this. You guys are amazing. So I just want to say that first. Um, Elizabeth, I agree with everything that you said about raising our own vibration and 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 what you were saying too, Susan, about remembering who we really are. Because when we forget who we are is when that allows those lower energies, those lower thoughts to come in. And so what, what I do is um, I use holy fire. And for me, that works. Um, it's very similar to the violet flame. I love to use holy fire um, on my clients and also on myself to keep myself clean and to release any of those. And Elizabeth, I love what you said about prayer because I was raised Catholic, but I really, you know, I was raised Catholic. Let's just leave it at that. But I had a gentleman come in uh, the other day and he had tons of entities on him. But the problem is he liked having them and he really kind of didn't want to give them up. But I know he wanted to get rid of some of them. So the whole time I'm like, okay, so what do I do with this? And the Lord's prayer came into my mind. And thank, thank you, God, that I remembered it. And I just said it over and over and over and over and said, whoever needs to go, go. And whoever needs to stay, that is up to the two of you. And I just did the Lord's prayer and these things just kept popping off of him. It was, it was really incredible. But for me, I try to be cognizant of what are my thoughts? What am I thinking? Paying attention to that. If I find that I'm thinking in a lower vibration, then flip the script flip the script and just tell myself how amazing I am, you know, whatever I need to hear to shift my vibration and raise my vibration. And I also use um, Holy Fire. So thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. And that's, I love that. And that specifically naming the technique, super helpful. So yeah, anybody else, anything else to add on that topic of, of how do we, how do we get rid of them? Um, uh, another question, is there any cautions that we should be aware of when we're trying to clear ourselves? And I'm adding in everybody's contact information into the chat because someone just asked. So I'm just putting it in here so you guys have it. I'll add that uh, doing the therapy, cutting the ties that bind can uh, re release entities that were attached to you for the reasons um, of the trauma that you experienced at a younger age. So if you're cutting the ties that bind and healing traumas, as you heal those, the entities will release uh, automatically through that process. Oh, is that right? That's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's awesome. Fantastic. So any, any cautions we should be aware of as we're trying to clear ourselves? I think I might add in just be courageous and be love and don't be afraid entities want you to be afraid. So be love. And uh, I, I've learned so much from the angels, the angels will talk to a demonic being, I was pulling a client out of something quite two, two beings were holding on to this client in the abyss. And I guess the angels were training me. And so I'm pulling this, this client out. And these things are I finally get it, this person free. I don't know how that worked. The angels were holding on to me and I was holding on to the client, pulling him out and then got him free. We got him free. It's all through angelic assistance. And as we were floating away up into the light, these things were screaming, give him back, give him back. And the angel said, with all the love you can muster, oh, you can have him back, dear ones, come up to the light, come up to the light. And I thought, jeepers, they're talking to demons with all this love. And so I learned from that, love everything and everyone, have no fear, just know that you are love, you are light, you're a kind person, you're a good person, just be who you are and know that you are impenetrable. Thoughts are things. And so if you imagine yourself surrounded by a beautiful golden white bubble of light, and in your mind, you say, it is impenetrable, I'm safe, I'm secure, and I'm guided by the angels, it is, 
it happens like that in the non-physical world things manifest like that in the physical world things are slow as molasses but in the non-physical world things are very quick so just know you're safe you're secure you're surrounded by love call in the angels call in your guides call in the light whatever you're comfortable with whatever resonates with you and it is as you think it it is yeah that it's and i i so agree with that 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 i have i can can completely confirm that i have had in sessions where something really malevolent was there sometimes it was in, in one case it was a uh, uh an a, a, the spirit of an uh, a very violent uh ex-husband if you can imagine and there was no anger, like in terms of how, how the angels handled it was literally just coming with all the love and just escorted him very gently escorting. There's always, it's always in love. And it's, uh, it's amazing how powerful that is. And it is so reassuring, you know, to see that, that that's just this whole thing. Like, no, this just is another person to be another creature, another being to be loved. There's, you know, there's no, no one is, is uh, outside of that. No one gets dismissed, right? Nobody, nobody is bad in that light. Um, so we have a couple questions that came in. Um, so uh, we've got, um, here we are. Somebody's saying, I love Karen so much. That's mm. very sweet. <laughs> and somebody wants to know what is holy fire? So Karen, could you explain? And a, a, a Karen V, who I ran into in the farmer's market today, which was very cool. So I'm glad you could join us, Karen. <laughs> Other Karen. Um, yes, um, holy fire is just another way of saying God's fire. Um, I learned it uh, in conjunction with Yusui Reiki. Um, it is <clears throat> it is kind of a, a newer part of the modality that came in. Um, and I, I was uh, introduced to the violet flame many years ago. So for me, it kind of feels like the same thing. Um, it's very powerful. It's of the light. And from my experience so far, nothing can withstand being encased in, in the fire if it's not of the light. That's my experience of it. So um, I'm sure that there are plenty of ways that you can be introduced to the violet flame. Um, or if you want to do holy fire, you can find a Reiki practitioners that teach that. It's great stuff. Mm -hmm. It was, it was really helped me. Um, it helped take my healing to the next level. When I learned Holy fire, I use it every day. That's fantastic. Fantastic. I would add, um, I, one other method that that's particularly effective with, um, uh, with implants, but also works with entities, but, but in non-physical things, such, I mean, non, uh, non-conscious things, such as implants is that they, you can see them, uh, think of them as, as, it, as it's just another form of energy, but energy never is destroyed. So you always have to see the energy becoming something else. So uh, you can use whatever psychic tools you have, whether you want to use violet flame or whatever, whatever works. And it can be something that's in your language, in your imagination to then transmute that energy to something neutral, back to neutral energy that goes back to source. So, so remembering that nothing is ever destroyed it's all, all energy is to be honored. All thought forms are to be honored, right? All emotions are to be honored. So there's nothing is ever vilified or made bad. It's all, and it's same thing as the energies that come up in you, right? The energies that we're trying, that are attracting the entities, they're not bad, that they all have to be honored and recognized. And then we can transmute them back into neutral energy to be repurposed for something else. Um, so it's just, and, and you can work with that in terms of your own imagination, your own language, the tools that you've learned um, uh, you know, to, to make that work for, for your language. So, um, all right. So we've got a question from, uh, Kiana says in a, in a sleep paralysis state, how do you clear entities that come up when you are in that state? I had this happen and I'm curious how others have done this. So i you know, Kiana, I've actually heard people say that they were sort of in that, that in between that state when you're, when you are physically paralyzed in sleep and they had, uh, like something in the house that freaked them out. Um, so does anybody have a, have an answer for that one for Kiana is what do you do if you have an entity that comes up when you're in a sleep paralysis state? I can assist on that front. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, yeah. I'll start and maybe someone else will talk to. Um, yes. When you're in a sleep paral paralysis stage, you're actually between asleep and awake. You haven't quite awakened fully. And in that moment you are open. And if, 
your, well, let's say healing is really important. But in that moment when you are open, you don't realize that you're in control. Your mind is still functioning. So if something jumps into you, you can just say, out. <laughs> I would call in the archangels. I would call in Michael, the archangel Michael, specifically to clear uh, whatever doesn't belong. Uh, you will receive instant service, I will say. I, I've never seen any archangel work faster than Michael. It's like that. Um, but also, it's an opportunity, because you're in that state, to become more aware. What is it that is uh, getting your attention? If it's not threatening, if you don't feel threatened, if you don't feel worried, but maybe it's a guide, maybe it is um, a being of light, just become more aware before you make a decision. And then, uh, uh, but to be safe, I would call in uh, the archangels. I never believed in angels until I saw them, but I did call in uh, Michael the archangel one time, just I'd given up on trying to get rid of an entity it was hanging in the air in front of me that it uh, came out. It came out of this um, that gentleman who was uh, cursing. I didn't know what to do. I tried all kinds of things. Uh, I cast you out. I cast you out in the name of the Father and Holy Spirit. Nope, that didn't work. And then finally, I just called in Michael, and poof, he was gone. So that's uh, what I would do. Awesome. Awesome. All right, you guys, uh, one of the questions, it looks like you got answered in the chat, but it was such a good question. I wanted to just share it with everyone was somebody asked is uh, that if they should, if because of the fact we talked about that, that children can take on entities when they have small accidents or big accidents, and they asked, should we regularly try to clear our children um, of entities? And uh, and Susan answered that in the chat, but I think it's just a good answer for everyone to hear that, that yeah, absolutely, clear your home, clear your family, it's a great idea, just good energy hygiene for you and for the people that you love. Um, you, you know, you can do whatever technique that you have learned, um, as long as it doesn't violate anyone's free will, um, then it's a great idea to try to keep your space clean, keep yourself clean, keep your family clean. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So anyway, so that's absolutely. All right, you guys, this has been, I have to say, an awesome panel. Thank you very, I'll pat myself on the back. Awesome panel. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Anne. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you so much. Thank you for those of you on the East Coast, uh, Elizabeth and April, who stayed up late to be with us tonight, and Holly from California. And Karen's also from California. Susan's here, a local with me in Washington. But it's uh, it's been so great to have you with us. And thank you to all of you who joined us. It's been a super interesting discussion. I hope you guys found it as valuable um, as I did. And uh, wonderful to spend the time with you guys. So thank you for being part of this community, for being part of all of this. We also have uh, Jerry Bedlington with us tonight. Jerry is here. And Jerry is actually the stars of one of our YouTube uh, uh, YouTube um, videos. He's on the, the language of angels. He's here. And he also does a lot of clearing of this nature. So thank you very much for joining us, Jerry. Um, and uh, yeah, so so we will see you guys. We're always, remember, we're always every um, Thursday, second Thursday of every month, usually at 7 p.m., but occasionally I do it earlier at 10 a.m. to take an account for those people who are in other parts of the world. So, but it's usually 7 p.m. Pacific time. So I will see you guys next time. Have a fabulous weekend and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you guys. Bye.